Hello and welcome to today's talk. It's Tuesday the 29th of August. We'll be hearing from the President of the United States in a minute about his thinking of everyone, everyone in the United States. It looks like he wants to get a new vaccine, an additional COVID vaccine in autumn. But uh, we'll get it from his own mouth in a minute. And also I've been getting lots of questions on the new variant that seems to be emerging. And the CDC have said that people who um, could get this variant are actually more likely to get it if they've been vaccinated. So we're in a situation now where vaccination, according to the CDC, is increasing the likelihood uh, of infection. Quite incredible. And if you don't think those two things add up very well, then stick with it. Let's look at what's going on here first of all. Uh, this is the risk assessment summary from the, about the new variant from the Centers for Disease Control. Now, the new variant under consideration is called BA2.2.8. B, 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 A. <laughs> now, the fact it's a BA tells us it's an Omicron derivative. So this is not something completely new. It's not a new virus. It's an Omicron derivative. It is a, it evolved from the Omicron variants. It has a lot of changes, but it's not a dramatic new virus. And it's very unlikely that it's going to make people sicker. In fact, all the evidence so far shows that it's not. It's not making people iller. And personally, I'm not worried about this. It's just to be expected that there's going to be viral evolution. But let's carry on and look at it. Um, so it's been detected in Denmark, Israel, two cases in the United States, case in the United Kingdom. But the point is that these are not epidemiologically linked. The, the Denmark didn't get it from Israel, didn't get it from the United States, didn't get it from the UK. That means that it's popped up in all these different countries. Therefore, it's probably been around for a while. And of course, we're testing so much less now. It's not surprising that a variant could become fairly internationally ge geographically distributed. Um, and not, um, not not crop up on the radar for some time. So not linked, therefore probably, probably already fairly widespread. Uh, now, there's multiple um, genetic differences from the previous SARS coronavirus 2, mostly on the spike protein. Um, now, the existing tests are still effective. So if you've got some old COVID tests in the cupboard, they will still test uh, for this new variant. Now, I've copied this down verbatim from the Centers for Disease Control. BA286 may be more capable of causing infection in people who have previously had COVID-19 or who have received COVID-19 vaccinations. Now, the way they've worded that, I do hope it's not disingenuous because we know that the mutations on this, uh, on this new variant are virtually all on the spike protein. And we know that the vaccine is specific to spike protein, so it's not surprising that the, the vaccine is causing trouble. And we'll be looking at a minute in why it's actually probably causing more likelihood of infection. But if you've got natural immunity, you've got antibodies and resistance to membrane protein, envelope protein, nucleocapsid protein, genome proteins. It's polyclonal. So I really find that statement a little hard to understand from the Centers for Disease Control. Certainly see our previous vaccination would have an adverse effect, less so uh, the, the way that natural infection would have an effect. Although, to be fair, natural infection, of course, will cause some antibody production to spike protein, and that small component of the immune system would be less uh, efficacious. Now, um, why is this? Is not talked about. Is it because that repeated vaccination has caused stimulation of the T suppressor, now called T regulatory cells? that down-regulates the immune response. Um, is that what is happening, this, um, th this opposite effect of vaccination? Or is it that it repeated vaccinations are stimulating this rather new antibody we're learning about, immunoglobulin G, to, um, immunoglobulin G type 4? Now, this um, I've only heard about this in the context of RNA viruses, RNA... Um, um, vaccines, messenger RNA vaccines. It didn't seem to arise after the adenovirus vector vaccines. So it's maybe something specific. It could well be another weakness, of course, in this whole uh, whole trend to go towards mRNA vaccines. But how is this working? Well, 
Um, if there's increased um, immunoglobulin type 4, we know that immunoglobulin type 4 still goes to protect baby to some extent, the unborn baby to some extent, although with a vaccination this will be a very short lived effect and of course there's the possibility that vaccine antibodies going into the baby might not be a good thing always. Uh, neutralization, well that still seems to work so we can neutralize the spike proteins but the systemic activation of complement is reduced the opsoninization op, 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 let me explain that uh, an opsonin is, is a chemical that, that fits onto uh, to label uh, an antigen in preparation for um, immune destruction by the, uh, the, the phagocytes of the immune system so an, an opsonin is basically a label on an antigen saying immune cells please eat me so opsonization is that this labeling with, with an opsonin and that seems to be reduced so there would be less of this cell eating and this other one here um, seems to be reduced as well this is uh, antibody dependent cellular toxicity in other words the infected cells are less likely to be uh, eradicated so good reason why repeated vaccination that's stimulating immunoglobulin type 4 might reduce um, immunity overall. So it does make scientific sense that this could be happening as a product of a, as, as an uh, unanticipated consequence, I would say, of the RNA vaccines. No evidence that the new variant B286 is causing more severe illness. Wouldn't expect that because it's basically a, an Omicron derivative. Updated vaccine will be available as early as mid-September. Now, let's listen to the latest um, ramblings. I mean, um, the latest um, thinking on this from, uh, from POTUS. Tentatively, not decided finally yet. Tentatively, it is recommended that it will likely be recommended that everybody get it, no matter whether they got it before. signed off this morning on a proposal we have to present to the Congress a uh, request for additional funding for a new vaccine that is necessary, that works. And tentatively, not decided... So there we go, President of the United States. Sorry, it's rather poor sound quality there. But he wants a... Sounds like he wants everyone to have a new vaccine. We believe the funding concerned is $1.4 billion that he's asked for. And he wants everyone to have one. Um, absolutely uh, incredible that he thinks this is still necessary in my view. But there you go. He's the President of the United States, not for us to, uh, to argue. Now, let's just carry on with our reasoning here. Um, what can you do to protect yourself uh, as well as others as we learn more? Now, this is from the CDC. Uh, CD, uh, Centers for Disease Control in the United States. Uh, yeah, the updated vaccine should be uh, available as early as the next few weeks, actually. That, I think that's the one he's talking about. Right, so advice from the CDC. Uh, get your COVID vaccinations as recommended. So you click on the link and you find out that uh, COVID vaccines are safe, effective and free. Now, it's a little surprising they said that. Let, let's just give counter we can't disagree with the cdc of course we're not allowed to do that but let's just give some shall we say counter argument from uh, data from western australia so this is the graph we've looked at a few times uh, this is here is where there was uh, previous vaccinations before covid vaccinations uh, this was the reported adverse events on february uh, 2021 when COVID vaccines were introduced and these of course are the mass of adverse uh, events that were reported in Western Australia and yet it seems they're completely safe in the United States so it's a bit strange to me I'm, I'm just a bit dozy probably but it seems strange that there's huge amounts of adverse reactions in Western Australia but the vaccines are safe and effective in the United States Apart from the fact that the vaccines aren't effective because they cause more infection in this situation. But as you say, I, I, I can't disagree with the CDC. We've just given some other things for you to think about. Everyone six months and older should have an updated vaccine. Seven-month, six-month-old children should have another booster shot. 
according to the CDC. Um, there's going to be a time when they've got to answer for these decisions, surely sooner or later. Quite incredible. Uh, quite incredible. Strangely different data in Australia. Let's just carry on and look a little more about this variant just before we finish today. So this is from the journal Nature. Many spike protein changes, up to 30 mutations, we believe. And this, of course, explains the vaccine immune escape um, because it's making antibodies against a completely different type of uh, shape protein. Could outcompete the more common variant EG5 at the moment. I haven't really reported that much on these variants uh, lately because it's, it's absolutely inevitable this is going to be happening all the time. We are in the period of endemicity and will be for the next couple of decades. So it's not, it's not surprising that this is happening <coughs> at, at all in my, in my view. Latest COVID-19 booster vaccines are based on XBB 1.5, which, as we say, will probably become ineffective or may actually increase the likelihood of being infected with the new variant BA286. Now, um, let's just get, this is from the same journal, uh, Nature. Jesse Bloom, viral evolutionary biologist, uh, Seattle. Um, now, uh, and this is... This is in the journal. This is in pu published in Nature. I don't think anyone needs to be alarmed by this. Yeah, it's another, it's just, it's another Omicron. The most likely scenario is that this variant fizzles out and in a month nobody other than people like me even remember that it even existed. Uh, if BA286 does become widespread and proves adept at dodging neutralising antibodies, which we will do because of um, uh, at least the, va the vaccine antibodies, uh, which seems to be likely on the basis of the spike mutations. Other forms of immunity will probably stop most people from getting seriously ill if they are infected. So remember, the antibodies are just stimulating one very small aspect of the immune system, whereas natural immunity will be polyclonal and will give rise to protective um, cytotoxic killer cells and uh, T helper cells and various other uh, aspects, sensitised uh, um, macrophages and phagocytes there's many forms of the immune system so um, good to see that um, nature are quoting a scientist that's not worried about this um, but there we have it from the CDC a very stark admission that uh, vaccination can increase likelihood of infection now they do say that the vaccination if you get a repeat dose will reduce the risk of hospitalization we could argue about that but they do say you may be more, more likely to get infection. But, of course, you're only going to get sick um, if you get infected in the first place. So um, more probably more likely to be infected if you've uh, been vaccinated. And um, uh, yet at the same time, advising further vaccinations. Ours is not to reason why. Ours is but to report what the CDC says. And of course, POTAS. POTAS. So um, it really is. Um, I, 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 th I think uh, Mr. Biden was probably reading a bit off script there or not reading off script. So make of it what you will. I'm not going to comment further on that. But for now, thank you for watching.